power to power to power to power to oh just plug them in the wall and think of all you can do you can plant a garden fix your car build a house if you want to if you've got the proper power to power to hello 911 hello yes, just in and the welcome and trying out my new direct to Woody Toolshed, the podcast and YouTube video series where we review tools from Harbor Freight, the best tool store in America and probably the world, although I have not traveled that much outside of these great United States. Have you? I have not. Uh... I've also uh, never actually bought any tools from Harbor Freight. <laughs> That's fine. I'm a bargain supply guy. Oh, 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 shots fired at Harbor Freight. I'm sure they get that all the time. Bargain supply. That place, I, I think I've been there once. Do they have shelves? They do. Okay, well then maybe that's not where I was. The place I went, it was like just like somebody just set all the shit on folding tables. That might have just been stolen stuff. Now that I think yeah. about it, yeah. Where, where was it uh, enclosed in in a building, mm-hmm. or uh, were these uh, folding tables out on the side of the road? It was in it was in a warehouse that seemed abandoned. Uh-huh. Now that I now that I'm thinking about it, I think a lot of it was Craftsman and Snap On. It was probably stolen tools okay. that someone was selling. They were still in the box. It wasn't like they'd stolen them from a construction site. It was like they'd stolen them from a Sears or a, a Snap On truck. Probably both. Multiple times, from the looks of it, it was a a going concern. Probably mafia involved. Okay. I don't think I bought anything there. Because I shop at Harbor Freight. Hmm. The hmm. thing you got to know about Harbor Freight is cheap. The tools are inexpensive. They're like the wall, the Walmart ibuprofen, you know, where it says Walprofen, and then it says, compare to Advil. Do you think anybody ever actually does it? Like, uh, okay, I'm gonna do a blind just taste yeah, test. taking two doing a Pepsi challenge, but for ibuprofen. They do say the compare to on the Harbor Freight boxes, compare to Craftsman, which you should never do. Don't ever compare yourself to a superior brand of tool, although. What we're here to do is talk about whether or not these are truly superior. Because sometimes they might be, sometimes they might not be. We never introduced ourselves. I'm Nathan B. Woodard. I'm Andrew James Estes. That's right. And we are the hosts of We Don't Have a Podcast Yet. It's a most of the time, twice weekly affair. However, we've been missing for several weeks and we'll get more about that lately first up today we're reviewing these little guys these are tiny clamps it looks like the bottom half of a a duck's smiling face but you just took the head clean off like that oh this i see yeah yeah, you see what i'm talking this is the this is the beak, like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then you just lopped it, like everything above the beak, lop it right off. If you could turn this part, if I could, hmm, well maybe I can do, oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait, I think I've got it figured out. Yes, yes, we're going to make a duck, folks. This is a fun craft that you can do with your kids. Like if you get them on, uh, you know, every other weekend, take them to Harbor Freight, and then you turn this thing around, and then it kind of looks like a friendly little duck. You can put a googly eye right here. 
I wish we had like a second camera we could zoom in. Mm. But now I've turned it around. And if you're just listening to the audio version of this, go to YouTube and and you can watch the video. The Now I'm going to I'm going to put this back the correct way because it it does need to be clamping things in my in my workshop here. As you can see, I we we're recording from my garage. I have a lot of tools. There's some there's lots of stuff from Harbor Freight in here. I've got some great products. Uh, this I do have this Chicago electric uh, compound miter saw, but I have not purchased that recently. Uh, that will we'll save that for for sweeps week. We'll do a flashback episode and tell the story of the time that I bought. Chicago Electric Compound Miter Saw. Now these clamps, I will say, I bought for a specific purpose that I did not use them for, and that is to try and hold the two halves of my sectional couch together. This was a terrible idea. It did not work. Uh, I ended up just putting them out here in the garage. Um, I did buy another clamp, which I forgot to put out here, which we could have reviewed. Uh, these... Uh, as you can see, they have a little trigger here that tightens them up. And uh, at some point, you know, they get pretty tight. Like, it hurts. But if you're using them for something that's more high impact, they will just pop loose. They're not, they're not heavy duty. I would imagine these are great for building doll houses. What about dog houses? You could probably, it depends on how big your dog is. You're not, certainly not Clifford the big red dog. Okay, but, but then a cat house for sure. A cat house is a completely different thing, okay. buddy. If you, right. <laughs> if you gotta ask, you can't afford it. Uh, well, can I ask uh, you to undo my clamp? Oh, it's just, I... there's a little guy right here on this end. This you just, guy right here? Yeah, and that'll just pop it, pop it loose. I did end up using these on a project that I've been working on. Uh, I made a spice rack for my kitchen. I, uh, I, I'm not just an impresario in the old woodshed. Uh, I also uh, do a fair amount of uh, culinary arts. Wow. And uh, I have many, many spices, and I had such a large spice rack in my old apartment that when I bought this house, uh, it was too big to put anywhere in the kitchen. It held simply too many spices. And so I uh, had this vision of a compact kind of uh, spice rack that I could tuck away in my <laughs> kitchen. And, and let's take a look at it. Here it is. This is the this is the new spice rack that I built. As you can see, uh, it's all built from reclaimed wood, and I used uh, drawer slides on the top and bottom. That's I know that's not the correct way to use them. They're supposed to be on the side, but for this project, uh, they were more than sturdy enough to work that way. I also did some lovely dovetailing there. You might have seen uh, at the end of that. Uh, I did purchase a product from Harbor Freight, a, a, dovetail, a dovetail making jig, which in fact did not work. Um, I guess we could talk about the dovetail making jig for a moment. I, I don't think Harbor Freight will use this as one of their reviews because not only did I not do I not have it, I returned it to Harbor Freight. But uh, I have nothing good to say about it. It said that it made dovetailing as simple as can be. Just set it and forget it. And then uh, the instruction manual that came with the thing was uh, very confusing. And in fact, after doing some research on the internet, it turns out wrong. Oh. It did not have... Uh, correct or accurate measurements of how to set it up correctly and then people on the internet said oh this is just uh, this thing is made in China and there are several other companies that also offer the exact same product under a different name so you can just download a PDF of someone else's uh, 
someone someone else's uh, instruction manual for the thing. Uh, I did do that. I printed out a whole like forty page manual from another company that was selling the same product. Uh, I did attempt to set it up and had okay results, but ended up just returning it. And when I returned it, the guy was like, is there anything wrong with it? And I was like, well, it, the manual is bad. You can't use it unless you go on the internet. He was like, but is it broken? And I was like, no, not, I didn't break it. Uh, I never, never really used it. And he was like, but it's, it's, it's got a, a manufacturer's error or something. And I was like, Kind of, I guess. I had a hard time explaining it to him, but I was like, "This product is not is not uh, usable as advertised. It's not a." Uh... And and then I went back, and that's when I was looking at these, and the guy uh, was putting the box back on the shelf. He just taped it up, and he came around the corner with it, and he went, "Oh, oh, you're shopping here." <laughs> he. Uh, so what you're saying is the, the, the good employees at Harbor Freight know when they've done wrong and uh, do feel shame. He definitely did. He turned red like a big old tomato because he was just going to put that thing right back on the shelf and sell it to somebody else. <laughs> and I can't blame him. That's probably how it works at Harbor Freight. I don't imagine that the, they pay them uh, to make moral judgment calls, you know. Uh, this sort of makes me think about a time when I worked in a, uh, small local hardware store and, uh, we had door chimes for, for people who also had small stores, uh, that would, uh, play like a music box, like, uh, some music uh, oh, when, yeah. when you walked in the door and we had, a uh, probably about 20 of them left and they all had different songs written on them. But what I knew was that, uh. They, they were all Hava Nagila. I was just going to say, <laughs> my family had a doorbell that was programmable, and it had like over a hundred different songs, so you could change it like at Christmas time to play, just hear those slip, but I just loved it any any time that I thought about it, I would just go reprogram it to play Hava Nagila. Mm. It's a good song. Uh, we, we sold some of them, and uh, people were, were happy with their Hava Nagila door chimes. Uh, but other people would see um, Silver Bells on there and expect it to play Silver Bells. I would try to let them know, hey, if, if, if you've got your heart set on Silver Bells, you got to go somewhere else. These ones now. just play Hava Nagila. <laughs> yeah. But uh, other people in the store wouldn't uh, remember to do that, so they'd get returned and put right back on the shelf uh, yeah. before the customer left. It's a uh, yeah. It's an embarrassing thing when uh, people walk into your uh, daughters of the Confederacy headquarters and the door goes. <laughs> anyway, I give these clamps four stars. Great for little little detail work when you're gluing something together and you got to hold it in place. Uh, also, pretty good for. Clamping down, say that you're using a, a a router, and you've got a big piece you're working with. You can clamp it to the table with these little guys, and the, they got the quick release action. Easy piece. I I like to use mine uh, to uh, keep my Dagwood sandwich manageable. <laughs> yeah, you can and, you can get this thing around a manwich pretty easy, uh, and just squeeze. Until the all of the sloppy Joe comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to give mine uh, one half of a duck's head. It's <laughs> <is> my rating. <laughs> all right, next up. The big boys. Holy shit, ladies and gentlemen. Is, this the, is that the giant clamps entrance music? It is, folks. This is... Oh, it, this one... Kind of sounds like a duck. It sounds like it sounds like Donald Duck is having an asthma attack. Hey, dig me! I'm Tom Morello. 
This is a, I want to say this is the 36 inch, but I don't, it doesn't have a tag on it anymore. This is a big clamp for doing woodworking. Uh, this would be good for if you're making a, like a cabinet or something. Yeah. Or, or if you just wanted to like clamp several thick things together. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'd say this is the first thing we've reviewed that uh, you could probably use to torture somebody pretty good. Yeah, you could get this thing around. I mean, you could put this on a baby easy and just make him slowly shorter by tightening it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be using this to build a new cabinet for my cats to shit in. I, uh, I'm i sorry about my language. My cats, they don't poop. They shit. Uh, they, they have a, a fancy little mid-century style box that is disguised as kind of a little... Uh, cabinet in my living room that there's a door on the side that they can hop in and then they take a shit in there and they've somehow managed to always miss the litter box that is inside when pissing and uh, the wood that it was made out of has been destroyed and it's got those cool little spindly you know like the you know the mid mod style the the little pointy legs that come down on like a coffee table oh yeah little like ice cream cones these th they're completely loose the thing is just balancing on them there's no screws holding it in it's just a matter of time before a cat takes a heavy enough shit to send that thing tilting over knocking down half of the things in my living room and destroying my priceless lamp so hopefully before that happens, I'll be using these big clamps to glue together the pieces of a new cabinet that I can use in place of the one that I have destroyed with cat urine in my house. I promise it doesn't... Now, now I noticed that you said that you're planning on using the clamps and glue. Are, are you not a, a fan of uh, screws? Well, as a, a, as a woodworker, I prefer to use wood joinery. I think screws are... Tacky and modern. Inelegant, yes. That's right. I will be... I, I, I've bought a better dovetailing jig. I'm not going to buzz market them. This is just a podcast about Harbor Freight. But I would give these big clamps... Two out of three clamps. I, I haven't really used them for much. I did... Uh, when building my spice rack, I did glue... Uh, a piece together in the wrong direction uh, with a very, very uh, tight fitting. Uh, like I said, no, no screws. I couldn't unscrew it. I had to fit these two pieces together lengthwise uh, and, and then realized it was backwards. And I used this thing to just slowly screw it out of place so that I could bonk it back together with a wooden mallet. Any thoughts on the big clamp? Um, the bigger the better when it comes to clamps. There you have it. This isn't yeah. the biggest one, but I listen. I don't have, I don't have the setup to be doing anything bigger than this clamp can do. I have another one that I bought. It's a slightly shorter. Yeah. It's a Jorgensen brand, I believe, from Lowe's. This one costs probably half of what that one cost, and it's... And it's bigger. It's bigger, and it, it's almost identical in design. I don't think that there's anything this clamp could do that that one could do better. The, the only thing I say that that one could do better than this one is uh, be visible in low lighting, because it's got the bright orange color scheme, whereas this one might blend in if you don't have a whole lot of light on it. Mm-hmm. This one has like a very nice uh, powder coating on it too. Clamp. Clamp. All right, next up. Let's see. We're we're going to be reviewing this, the Warrior 3 by 21 inch belt sander. This thing has a 7 amp motor. We got it right here, folks. 
here. You can see this is a video of it. Beautiful, beautiful bit of sander. It's it's very dusty, as you can see. It's uh, it has that variable speed knob right there on the top. This thing is a workhorse. I I can't say enough. I made that. I made my spice rack out of reclaimed wood from my old bookshelves. You remember at my old apartment, I had uh, built very intimidating giant bookshelves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I painted them a very dark gray to kind of offset the fact that everything else in my living room was, was white or light gray. I had a whole wall of windows with sheer curtains. And so I built two giant bookshelves and then a low-lying uh, entertainment center that all filled up the entire wall. And I had some, like, bias lighting that bounced off the top. Anyways... All of that wood was dark gray, and uh, I didn't want to use dark gray wood for this project, so I bought this Warrior 7 Amp belt sander, and uh, I sanded the shit out of all that wood back to its original color. And this thing worked like a tree. Now, is this uh, like a little uh, dump bag? That or is, that? it's, yeah, it's kind of like a colostomy bag. It, it, it is currently full of sawdust. I'm going to go put this in my composter outside. I think all the cool kids call colostomy bags dump bags. Dump bags. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite Digital Underground album. Uh, this, this thing uh, is great. Uh, uh, Compared to uh, Makita model or whatever they say, uh, it it's probably exactly the same. I don't think that you could tell. It is, as long as you're not working, you know, a job site out in the driveway or something, that is one, one drawback. This is not a cordless sander. It does have a cord, as you can see. The cord is good. It's sturdy. It's yeah. not three pronged, so you don't have to worry. You can you can be running your little trouble light extension cord, and then uh, sanding. And I gotta say, uh, it, it's got a good heft to it. It's got it, a it's, good heft. It's got an adjustment here. Does not feel like a, a bargain tool. It's it has a lock locking mm -hmm. mechanism here. You can pull the trigger in. And then lock it in place, which is fun if you are doing a long board and you got to do a lot of sanding. Also fun uh, if you just want to hook it up to a couple hundred feet of extension cord and, and watch it go down the street. Because it can do that too. And, mm -hmm. and again, it has a variable speed setting. You can... <clears throat> You can that maybe this is how you could decide which one is better, this one or the you know Makita. Set them both at top speed and see which one gets to the end of the block first. Do you think that uh, if you were going to sand, say, uh, hardwood floor in in a, in a home, do you think that there would be a market for this this guy, but done up like a uh, one, one of those uh, vacuum cleaning robots? Now that's an interesting thought. I I think that my biggest concern sanding sanding my floor would be uh, not accidentally sanding a pattern into the floor. And the robot, I do have the robot in my house, and he does do a pattern that I'm afraid could be discernible to the naked eye once he's finished. It definitely is. When he goes on the carpet, he kind of mm -hmm. does like a a cool little zigzag pattern, you know, kind of like Hank Hill mowing his lawn, you know, making that perfect checkerboard. Um, I don't know that I'd want that. I think, it, honestly, I also have, look, this is not, actually, I think this is from Harbor Freight. This here is the Power Glide. Oh, this one's got some stuff. His, his bag, he's seen some action. His bag doesn't doesn't hold together as well as it used to. He he lost the drawstring, 
Uh, but this guy just kind of vibrates around. And, uh, yeah, I feel like I could probably just set him up like this on the hardwood floor and just let him, uh, you know, electronic football around the house mm. for a couple of weeks. He'd get the job done. Now, I'm noticing that uh, this one is just called uh, One Quarter Sheet Sander, while this one is named Warrior. Um do you think that they uh, should have given one quarter sheet sander uh, a cool name? Or do you think that they have to be mm, sparing with those and only give them to the truly uh, exceptional tools? Well, they, this this is called a power glide. Okay. So this one is just a quarter sheet in the sense that you cut a sheet of sandpaper into quarters and then stick it on here. Sometimes they have a adhesive ones that you can just but this is the belt sand the belts are more expensive but it's a much faster you wouldn't you wouldn't want to do you would this thing is getting it everywhere i'm be gone all right that <clears throat> i give this thing five out of five stars um, I'm going to give it, uh, uh, a, a quarter belt. A quarter, one quarter belt. One quarter belt. That's not going to work very well. It needs the whole belt. got to go all the way around. I guess it okay. could, you could cut it lengthwise and just have a skinny belt. Well, I, I was, I was thinking a belt that went the other way around. Like a belt like this? Just, just to for, keep it just pants a fashion up. belt. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. I didn't mention that I'm also buying pants for my sander. Tan yeah. It <laughs> to hide his little bag. Yeah, yeah. 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 I want him to look cool when he goes out on the town, uh not have everybody want to jiggle at his dump bag. Is that <laughs> yeah, too that's, much to ask? That's fair enough. Okay. All right. What else do we got here? Next up, we've got this, the Braun 4-foot LED hanging shop light, 5,000 lumens. It's LED. You never have to change the bulb. This thing is incredible. There it is. Yes. I bought two of these at Harbor Freight, just on a whim, actually, because of my birthday happened, and... My wife gave me a Harbor Freight gift card for my birthday, and I was burning a hole in my pocket, and so I went and I purchased this, another one of these. They, as I said, they were on clearance. Uh, they were eighteen dollars a piece, um, and then uh, after I got them home, uh, I saw that they had just upgraded. To a newer version of this product, the Braun 4-foot hanging LED shop light uh, now comes with a, a outlet on the other end of it, so you can just plug them into each other, uh, and that one cost $19, so it's also uh, 500 lumens brighter, so I guess I'm the goose on this one. Probably should have waited and just bought the $19 version that wouldn't require me to run more extension cords to plug in somewhere in my shop. I did I did actually hook one of these up. I haven't hooked up this one, but I had one I had an old one that had uh, burned out. It was it was normal fluorescent bulbs and I replaced it uh as you can see next to my fan uh also, this is there is no warning about this on the box, and I feel like this, uh, along with the fact that they advertised it as a clearance must go for sale item, that was a dollar less than the replacement product that was superior in every way. Uh, they also did not warn me ahead of time uh, that you need to watch out for ceiling fans when climbing up a ladder to install a shop light. I, I know that it's not common 
to have a ceiling fan in your garage, but sometimes the old man who owned your house before you uh, didn't think that it was worth putting an air conditioner in the shop and instead just put an old 80s ceiling fan light fixture uh, between two of the beams uh, with, a, <laughs> with, with a weird piece of wood holding it up. Um, uh, I did walk my ass right into a fan head first. Uh, it did knock me off the ladder and I smelled a weird smell and I had had a big goose egg and blood. Uh, I'm sorry that I don't have footage of this event happening, but I did do a Unsolved Mystery style reenactment of it. Here it is for you. Now you can see this is the tool. That's me. Ah, oh my god. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh my god. Ah, ah, that happened to me for real because Harbor Freight didn't put a warning on the box that said, watch out. Hey, when you put these in your garage, watch out for any kind of whirling blades. However, you did let them know, and so any uh, any future instances of this product will have a helpful warning letting you know to look Hopefully, up. the next, when they come out with the 6,000 lumen one, and they put the 5,500 lumen daisy chainable yeah. four-foot LED hanging shop light, when that one goes in the, into the bargain bin and they sell it for... $18.50 and call it a savings. Hopefully that one, the the new the new generation, that one will say, "Hey, d- don't stick your head in a fan." I didn't think about it. I thought oh, Harbor Freight's never steered me wrong. They're selling me a, a a light for my garage that I'll never have to replace the bulbs in. And then here we are. I've got a big goose egg. Hmm. All right. uh, A couple questions about this guy. Okay. Is 5,000 lumens uh, enough light? Because I I know in some instances, uh, maybe maybe 5,500 is a little too much, whereas 5,000 is uh, perfect. Do you think that you would be happier with a slightly brighter light? Now, I... See, I... I think I you can see in here. I have several of these. I've been slowly replacing the old-fashioned fluorescents when they burn out mm-hmm. with new LEDs. Um, these ones here, I got that one from the Do It Best, and I think that it is slightly less lumens than that one. That one, it's almost difficult to look at. This that one is one of the old five thousands. I can't imagine they sell some things that are even more powerful than this, but uh, I I can't for the life of me imagine ever needing something more yeah. powerful. You could just get two of these, and they're not that expensive. Even even if you're not getting them on the discount, you know, buy it now. It's it's clearance. Uh, I think they. For what it is, just get a hundred of them, and you could turn your house into the service of the yeah. friggin' sun. Plus, uh, since this light never goes out, you're going to want to buy a few just to break, because part of the fun of these things is just smashing light tubes. These ones, these, I'll say, these ones aren't as fun to smash. There's no tubes. It's just, it's diodes in there. But also, with a light that bright, you're going to have moths. They're going to be drawn to it, and the and the fact that it never goes out, you're going to get Morrissey. He's going to come wandering yeah. into your shop because <laughs> he heard there's a light that never goes out. Do you think that he's a big fan of that firehouse that has that old <laughs> Thomas Edison light bulb that won't burn out? Mm-hmm. Probably. Probably also goes to the tomb of the unnamed soldier. Yeah, he's just <laughs> he's crying. <laughs> Or wait, that's Kennedy's grave that has the... Uh, fl- oh, the Eternal Flame. The eternal I think flame. it's also the tomb of the unknown soldier. No. He's unnamed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it was Voldemort. They won't say his name. They don't want you to know. Well, I give this thing, as far as brightness goes, I give it five out of 5.5 lumens. Uh, but as far as safety goes, it's a big goose egg. I'm giving it a zero. Okay. Zero on safety. Uh, I am a fan of its uh, lightweight design, and I will give it one feather, like it has on the box. One feather. If Mario's here, he can use it to fly. Yeah. All right, what else do we got? Oh, oh. Now, this next one, it's a biggie. It's a, it's a, it's big. It's the Warrior Brand 10-inch Table Saw. You, you can see, you can move that rail from one side to the other for left hand or right hand use. It has a T-channel, has a guard over the blade. It also has on the back of it a port that you can hook up your shop vac to, and that will suction out the, the sawdust. Oh, it act like a dump bag for it, huh? You don't need a dump bag for this one. You can hook it up to your vacuum and, and just slurp it up. I will yeah. say that it uh, does have a funny size tailpipe. I don't have any hoses or attachments that are hooked up to it. I had to uh, duct tape a toilet paper tube to it to to hook up my vacuum hmm. to it. I probably so you made like a power tool centipede. I I did, yeah. In the future, I'll probably just get out the calipers, uh, do a quick uh, reading of the size of that thing, uh, and then three D print an adapter. They don't sell 3D printers or 3D printer accessories at Harbor Freight, so I'll have to go somewhere else for that project. But I, I, I'll say that the Warrior 10-inch table saw is an okay product. Just okay. It's, uh, it's kind of disappointing insofar as uh, how far you can move that fence out on it it's it's limited it is the cheapest table saw that they offer at harbor freight uh, my intention is to uh, pimp it out i'm going to uh, do some modifications to it instead of buying a more expensive table saw from harbor freight i think they had one that was called the uh, gladiator or something like that that okay. one had more bells and whistles but honestly it's not what I need. And I did use the I used the table saw a lot making my spice rack. It's quite loud anyway. You probably wouldn't be able to hear any bells or whistles anyway. It's it is an incredibly loud machine. Uh I I would suggest using a, a set of noise canceling headphones if you have some uh so that you can listen to music or uh, a podcast or uh, if you have a uh, a Roku player, uh, you can listen to, you can have a show going in the background while you're working on that. I have uh, this TV in the shop, and I like to watch King of the Hill. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Warrior 10-inch table saw uh, comes with uh, several, several attachments. It, uh, it comes with a little thing that you can use to push a piece of wood so that your hand isn't close to the blade uh, which is which is nice I, I i will say if i could sum up the warrior 10 inch table saw in one word it would be fear a healthy fear it, and i think that's good i'm afraid of it mm -hmm. and i want to remain afraid of it my brother owns one of those fancy ones where it can sense if your fingertip touches the blade and uh, then the blade goes into the machine like a dog's penis. And uh, I would just rather be afraid of my table saw than, than be like, oh yeah, this thing is like a dog penis. 
Check this out. Destroys itself to save you from... I've had my finger reattached. It's fine. It, I can't feel anything. I could get that thing caught in the blade. I would. It wouldn't bother me at all. Uh, but I, I, I do like playing the, the guitar, so I'll probably uh, just stick with uh, always being very nervous to use a table saw. Okay. Have you ever have you ever used a table saw? I have. Was it uh, was it a, a tense? Would would you say you, your butt um, tightens up a little bit? Yes, I I, I would say that's accurate. Uh, I definitely wasn't going willy nilly, and yeah. I also value the the many different things that my fingers can do. I like that this thing has a guard that goes over top of the blade. Uh, I, I probably, uh, every time that I use a table saw, uh, I like to, uh, go online and, uh, just go to the YouTube and look at videos about just be like table saw, do's and don'ts, safety, uh, and then just watch cause people will put up videos of times where a table saw, uh, almost fuck them up or, uh, sometimes they'll make a rubber hand and put it in the table saw just to show in slow motion how it fucks you up. Um, I'm, I'm, I've become more scared of the table saw shooting a piece of wood out of it and hitting me uh, than mm -hmm. I have been in the past. I also, while I did not get this from Harbor Freight, it was from, from Christmas, uh, I got a nice new router table. And that thing did shoot a piece of wood <laughs> about 100 miles an hour through my garage the other day. Uh, scared the hell out of me. Uh, so, if you're out there and you're using power tools, table-style table, table style power tools, be aware. They can shoot pieces of wood. Yeah. Like a rail gun. And uh, there, uh, there's a, no reason not to wear goggles. Goggles. While using them, uh, they might not look cool, but then again, they might look cool. They, you know, they've got a lot of different ones, and depending on what you think looks cool, they might have a goggle for you. They might indeed have a goggle. They've, they've got the old school, like school ones, you know, with the mm -hmm. with the elastic strap that you have to wear in like uh, chemistry class when you're doing beakers and a Bunsen burner. There's a lot of now the the style that looks like a like clear Oakleys. I have some of those laying around. That's mm -hmm. usually what I use. But I, I the goggle kind are best for sawdust. You know, I have long, uh, feminine eyelashes, and I get stuff caught in them a lot. And are, then, are you going to recommend a good eyelash comb? Uh, I'd just say a, a good brawn beard trimmer, uh, and, and just, zzz, zzz, just cut them off. They make you look like a woman and it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to be a woman. I don't think anyone should yeah. do it. Well, I, I mean, give are being you embarrassed a woman... that, that your, your beautiful eyelashes saved your actual eye from sawdust? That is they're doing true. their job. That's what they're there for. But um, God gave us goggles so that we don't have to look gay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Might we take a short break? Yes, let's okay. take a break. And we'll be back with another review. Okay. Okay. And we have one last item to review on the show this evening. And that is, we are reviewing the Bauer Hammer Drill by Bauer. You can take a look at this thing. Here it is. This is a pretty handy, it has a switch. So you, uh, you can switch between Hammer Drill and Normal Drill Mode. This thing has a... Uh, a little handy holder for your uh, chuck key down on the cord. This is not a cordless hammer drill. This is a corded hammer drill. 
uh, yeah, has a optional second handle and a depth guide. Now, uh, on this uh, handle here, uh, what if I were a lefty? Oh, you can loosen that up, and then you should be able to oh. flip it around. There you are. Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> Something sure, like that. Sure enough. Yeah. Well, you've got it on the... Yeah, I do. If you fire that thing up now, you'll be in a world of hurt. Um, this is a great product. I assume I didn't get to use it. I, I specifically purchased this after having done it the wrong way many, many times before. Uh, when mounting things, I live in a brick house, uh, like like a wise little pig, and uh, so sometimes when I want to attach something to the wall, I have to uh, drill a hole in brick to be able to, uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> So when I was making my spice rack, I thought, well, this is perfect. Spice rack is going to weigh roughly 50, 60 pounds, all loaded up with spices from the Orient. Uh, I'll, I'll just do, anchor that fucking thing in the brick. And then I, I said, you know what? I will go out and buy a hammer drill. I got this birthday money. I'm going to... I'm going to get the right tool for the job. I'm not going to use my goddamn cordless drill and just go into the brick for like an hour to get like a two inch hole. Uh, so I bought the kind that you use to put holes in bricks. Uh, and then it took me all of... Uh, Six seconds to find out that uh, there was no bricks behind that plaster. There was nothing behind that plaster for at least nine inches. I know because I put my penis in the <laughs> hole. <laughs> no, there was nothing. It was a void. I put a I put a, a shish kebab skewer in there, and it could not reach. There's there's a there's a nothing in there. Nine inches. Is that... That's not enough room for... Yeah. Okay. A rat? I, I, I was... Well, a there rat might very be well a rat could be in, in there. there. I, I was worried that possibly there there was a, a, a secret man in there. A <laughs> secret man? Yeah. Like, you were living in what you thought was a home, but really was an aquarium that a very, very thin man built for you... Oh, he's you know, frog because he's all he needs, like he's a two-dimensional sort. Oh, uh, yeah. Know? I mean, that's probably. He just likes to watch. Fans. We hear there is a bird that has made uh, his home in the exhaust vent over my uh, microwave. Uh, that that is right next to the thing. So maybe uh, the man and the bird are in cahoots. I, I did drill a hole that he could now peep through to, you know, see me. I do sometimes get up in the night in the nude uh, to uh, get a sip of water. So, it's possible yeah. he's watching. Could, could happen, yeah. I do also never shut the front curtain, so if you want to see me <laughs> getting a sip of water in the nude... Um, yeah, help yourself. I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, just get that G get that geo guesser guy to figure out exactly where I live. And I'll show you my flaccid hog. Um, so yeah, I didn't get to use this drill for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm, when you got a hammer drill, everything looks like a brick that needs a mm. hole in it. I might. I was about to say this. This drill's probably burning a hole in your pocket. It's burning right? a hole in every brick in my yeah. house. I was thinking maybe 
I might get a... Uh, I'll just d drill a bunch of holes in all the bricks for my fire pit and then bolt the br bricks all together somehow. That could be a thing. You're not going to clamp them together and glue them? I could. I could get the, put them on the router table, cut some nice, neat dovetails and... and mm -hmm. uh, Oh, has anybody ever tried that dovetail bricks? Oh, this could be my this could be my thing. People be like, he's the guy that invented the bricks that don't need glue. Yeah, that's Legos. You, you, that's you, Legos. I just invented Legos again. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Hey, how come they don't make a house out of the Legos? It's a pretty good question, honestly. I know that. Uh, uh, Heineken bottles in uh, third world countries were squared so that you could uh, build yourself a shanty out of your Heineken bottles. That's neat. They they made Heineken shanties. Yeah, I'd use milk crates, but I guess you'd have to drink a lot of milk. Huh. I'd rather. I guess I'd rather be drinking a bunch of Heineken than a bunch of milk. Well, maybe maybe if you had a beer company and a milk company, they could, uh, you know, work together. Beer and milk together at last. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's tried Everyone's it yet. Everyone's favorite cocktail. I'll have a milk beer, please. <laughs> I'm building a shanty. <laughs> <laughs> just you got a big tall glass of milk beer uh, would you like to come back and see my shanty later tonight if you play your cards down right we might knock over my shanty yeah. later it does feel like milk crates would also probably be less wobbly than Heineken bottle houses well they're they're squared bottles but did, did they interlock? Like a milk crate locks into the one below it. I guess I do recall that when the milk crate challenge was happening on the internet, that those weren't particularly solid, you know, trying to climb up a big pyramid of milk crates just falling on your ass. How many people were... Uh... Badly injured from doing that. I have no idea. Did they ever... Did the U.S. Census Bureau ever release the statistics on how many people were hurt from the milk crate challenge? They're like, what, what, how many, how many people are in your household? Well, I'll be damned. Oh, they have a little, they have a little... They, they have like a, a male and female end of the bottle. <laughs> they got a thing on the bottom of the bottle so that the top of the bottle can go into it. That's interesting. Well, I would I would try it. I'd build a shanty. I got nothing going on. I, you know what? You can move into my house. I'm going to build a beer shanty. Yeah. Why not? I'll be in the yard. Just, oh yeah, no, I got this house for free. The guy got really into the idea of building a shanty out of beer bottles. Mm -hmm. It's a one condition that I get to live in the house for free. He's out there like a like an ornamental hermit. Just yeah, out there. I, I think that the light uh, sunlight coming through the the green glass would be kind of beautiful, but uh, the the constant smell of skunky beer would <laughs> yeah. probably not be so good. Boy, oh boy, you probably it'd be great to be a teen boy in whatever country they had these uh, beer bottle shanties. You get to see like just the silhouette of a. Sexy lady changing into her nightgown. Anyways, uh, back to the back to the hammer drill. While I did not get to use the hammer drill for anything, I uh, I did have to talk to a lady at the store. Go away. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Uh, the old ball and chain showed up to the yeah, made to the, the boys' club. Made the mistake of trying to bring you beer. Uh, 
Can you believe it? I only want square bottle beers <laughs> now. I'm obsessed. Uh, I went to the Harbor Freight, and I did purchase that hammer drill. And they had an older lady working at the checkout. And uh, I was trying to use my... Uh, uh, Harbor Freight Inside Track Rewards card, and it wasn't working, and she leaned around the plexiglass protective barrier, protective barrier and was like, you have to, <laughs> and coughed directly into my mouth, like le leaned around it to try and point to something, and then just coughed the sickest sounding cough. I have ever heard. And then I contracted the novel coronavirus the next day. And that that is a, a large part of why it has taken us so long. If to you're get wondering, to this hey, how come it how come <laughs> the podcast didn't come out for like two weeks? Uh, I mean part of that was just the fact that we said that we were gonna record it. In front of a camera in the garage, and I made a big mess of the garage. But another big part of it was that I was bedridden for five days, uh, and then uh, have not felt mentally uh, back to normal still. I, uh, I'm living in constant shame, and my wife is doing victory laps, mm -hmm. saying, Now... I'm not the stupid one, which is hurtful. Yeah. And if you could please keep me in your prayers and subscribe to the Patreon, <laughs> I need it more now than ever. Yeah. I can't think of, like, the name of Will Smith's character from the movie Hancock. Can't, can't recall <laughs> what it is. I'm like, what's that guy? Yeah. He's in Hancock. He was the main character in Hancock. What was that guy's name? What did they call him? The Flying Bum. What was, what was that guy called? Got me. Huh. Anyways, so if you want to catch coronavirus from an old lady who uh, they won't let take a sick day, uh, might I suggest the... Uh, the... Harbor Freight in Louisville, Kentucky, mm. uh, in the Bashford Manor area. That's the, that's the one. It's also the one where that guy was putting something back on the shelf and was like, "Oh, ah." Uh. But hey, the tools are cheap, so I give them three out of five stars. Uh, I I haven't actually been, uh, but I hear good things. There you get no cell phone reception in that store, too. Yeah. Uh, real son of a bitch. If uh, they don't have it, though, I, I'd suggest uh, going down to Bargain Supply. We'll have to do a separate show <laughs> just for Bargain Supply. It's pretty much the, the same thing, uh, I believe. Do they have... What are the brands that they sell? Oh. It's not Craftsman. Not Craftsman. It's not... Uh, Cobalt. They, they do have some DeWalt stuff. Well, they're already better than Harbor Freight. <laughs> Harbor Freight has Warrior, General, Gladiator, uh, Chicago Electric, Braun, Bauer. They haven't got anything. They're one step above when you buy something from Amazon and it's coming from China and it's called like you know Me Too and you're like who made up the name of this it's called Me Too Me Too brand wireless phone charger I actually my my wireless phone charger is a uh, the brand name is CYO -Yo. that was the least embarrassing one I could find Okay. Well, this has been the show. Thanks for watching. If you if you're watching this on Harbor Freight's website, uh, I'm sorry that I cussed.
If you're watching this on our website, thanks for subscribing. Yeah, and we're sorry we didn't cuss more. And if and if you're watching this on, you know, live leak or something like that, fuck you, pirate. Pay for our show or support our show by uh, watching it on Harbor Freight's website. Yeah, well, I mean, th there are often pirates in a harbor. That's true. They har the harbor was made for pirates. Did you hear that? Yes. We got a squirrel. All right. Well, we got to deal with that. Uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.